Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Good evening, and welcome to Join the Discussion, a monthly show about senior health and wellness. My name is Madeline Francesi. I am the Vice President of Development and Marketing at Hebrew Healthcare, and I will be your host. Thanks for joining us tonight. Our guest tonight is Katherine Gonerman, the director of the Center of Innovative Philanthropy at the Jewish Community Foundation. Katherine just completed a community-wide study called JMAP that was co-sponsored by the Jewish Community Foundation and the Greater Hartford Jewish Federation. JMAP, 1,250 people participated in the study and they collected over 1.2 million data points. Tonight, we're gonna to learn about the goals of JMAP and how people felt about being Jewish life in Greater Hartford and how they were connected in Greater Hartford and how it made Greater Hartford unique. Thanks for joining us tonight, Catherine. Thanks for having me, Madeline. I have so many questions for you. Um, we're gonna, I know JMAP um, interviewed a range of, of citizens age-wise, but we're gonna to focus tonight on seniors. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, with that, first let me start, what does JMAP stand for? Is it obvious? Of sure, so um, the reason that we did JMAP is because we don't have a lot of data about the Jewish community specifically. We have census data and government data about the population across Greater Hartford, but we really wanted to understand what makes uh, the Jewish community tick and mm -hmm. what some of the differences are uh, between our diverse uh, groups and what are our commonalities. So um, we had a survey in June. It was an open survey mm -hmm. that anyone could take. Before you go further, what made the Jewish Community Foundation and the Federation decide this was the time to do this study? Well, we did a demographic study in 2000. Okay. Um, so that's almost 20 years ago now. Oh my God. And, um, <laughs> and one of the things that um, is really important as this community changes, like any community, is to understand what's motivating people and where some of the differences are. Um, so we wanted to have some data. Lots of organizations understand what's going on with a particular community that they serve, mm -hmm. but it's hard to understand the overall community. So that's what JMAP is really trying to do. So the, I know you learned a lot, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, what was the number one fact you learned about seniors, if you had to say? What was your number one? Mm. That's a tough one. So. Uh, there was a lot of really good information about seniors and what was important to them and their values and their perceptions of the community and their experience. Um, I think one of the really important facts was that 62% of the survey respondents who are over the age of 65 plan to age in place. So mm. they're not expecting to go to a assisted living facility or a retirement community, they want to live at home mm -hmm. for as long as they possibly can. Okay. Wow. And that's really important for the community to know so that we can prepare as community agencies and as community members. Okay, I'm sure we'll, we'll get back to that. Let me, let's talk about more generally. Mm -hmm. um, so I know you, you measured attitudes and beliefs. Um, so what were the top attributes for a healthy, vibrant community according to seniors? And did it differ drastically mm. from the lower age groups? So I think that was one of the places in the JMAP study that was the most interesting. So this is the JMAP booklet. Oh great, I'm so glad you brought booklet. that. Uh, this is just a general overview. And then there's lots more information at the JMAP website. But in terms of the top five things, we asked people what the top five attributes of a community would be, the top five programs and services, and the top five institutions or people. So the summary of that was that um, synagogues are really important across the community. Um, 
even people who are not members of synagogues and who wouldn't necessarily want to be a member of a synagogue thinks that they're important for a healthy, vibrant Jewish community. Uh, quality Jewish education. So we know that the community values Jewish education, but they said very strongly that Jewish education for people of all ages, not just kids, was really important. Um, being welcoming was the third most important thing. And this is consistent across the entire community. How did they define welcoming? So it was self-defined, uh, but I think it's interesting you could see in some of the data underlying that what people uh, were kind of pointing to. And I think one of the things they, they said was also uh, being accepting of religious differences. Okay. Uh, the younger generation said that they wanted people to be more accepting of lifestyle differences. Mm -hmm. um, and I think uh, one of the things we saw when we asked people if they wanted to be participants and if they wanted to participate more than they currently do, we asked them why they might not participate if they're not participating as much as they'd like. And many of them said that they had no one to go with. Mm. And I think that's that feeling of, I'd like to go to this thing, but I don't know what it's gonna feel like. And I'm not walking in with anybody, so I feel just lost. Exactly, and so mm. that feeling of being welcomed, no matter how you enter the room, mm -hmm. is really important. And I think, if I were to guess, that's part of what I would think they mm. were saying when they said welcoming. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Then I thought it was interesting because um, the 65 plus group said, and this was across the board as well, but uh, programming to engage young families and programming to engage interfaith families, mm. that those were two really important things. And uh, later, a distant but still in the top was meeting the needs of the elderly. Okay. So I think the senior population is looking out for the rest of the community quite a bit. Well, they are the mothers and fathers exactly. of the community. Um, were there specific institutions or leaders in our community that, that people thought were the top five there too? Mm -hmm. So did... they said synagogues and uh, different age groups and different segments said that uh, rabbis and strong leadership and Jewish community agencies. Now, the people who identified synagogues as important, do you think all of them are active participants or is it just being a member that's enough to tether you to something? It's interesting because even those who are not members said that it's important to have oh, synagogues interesting. Interesting. in the community. So I think um, people look to synagogues. You know, sometimes you, you want to be able to know that if you needed it, it's there for you. Um, you know, many people who are members um, don't go all the time, mm -hmm. but they know that when it's time to come, that there will be something there for them. And I think that's a really important part of community. Mm -hmm. um, and especially for seniors, knowing that there are people who will be there to help you when you need a different kind of help is really important. And, you know, I don't know if you've asked this specifically, but I, I would assume congregants would feel more comfortable confiding in their spiritual leader, hopefully, if they have an issue I would and think, don't know where to go. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would think so. So those people who are unaffiliated, mm -hmm. did you find they are more um, uh, uh, removed in general from the community? Did they have a different kind of overall feeling about the community if they weren't involved actively? It's interesting. Um, we have a separate report. You know, it's so hard to summarize a whole group. Well, million point two data points. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> you know, what do you mean? What have you been doing all day? <laughs> I should have had that done in like 12 exactly. hours. Exactly. But, um, <laughs> one of the things that I think is really interesting uh, is the diversity across the entire community. So, um, you know, there are some trends and those trends are really important. And then there's a lot of diversity in terms of why people connect, um, why they're not as connected as they'd like to be, when they reconnect how they connect, mm -hmm. right? Um, so for some younger people, they're really thinking about what kind of career should I have? Am mm. I going to find a life partner? Right. Um, what do I want to be as an adult? Mm -hmm. um, and some of them have found ways to explore those things with the Jewish community, and some of them are really focused in other areas. Um, we saw that some of that group said that they'd like to become say synagogue members in the future, maybe when they have a family, but they're not right now. 
Um, and some people, there were some differences in terms of what was important to them. Um, you know, some people said that a synagogue just isn't part of my Jewish identity. Um, some people said that uh, they really, they feel comfortable uh, practicing with their family, you know, having Passover seders as sort a family. Sort of a private thing. Exactly. It's a, it's a private thing and they don't really want to connect to an mm -hmm. institution. Um, but I think, you know, one of the things that we see across communities, whether it's the Jewish community or more broadly in the data from, you know, books like Bowling Alone, mm -hmm. um, is that a lot of people want to be connected to community, don't know which community should be their community, and don't really know how they fit that into their daily lives. Mm -hmm. um, so again, that comes back to that welcoming piece of understanding that I like to say that community is a place where you belong, whether or not you feel like you fit. Right, I exactly, and it's also interesting, it would be interesting to look at it and see if the people who are older, 65 and older, for example, grew up here, mm. and the people who are younger or the people who are feeling a little more removed from the community relocated. Mm -hmm. You know, does that play into it? You know, because the, right. the greater Hartford, you have so many people who are born and bred, Right, right here in West Hartford right. and very proud of that. And it's interesting because we have some of that data um, and I, I haven't done the analysis on that piece yet but one of the things that we see is that um, and this makes sense sort of instinctively but that people who have recently moved haven't figured out their community connections mm -hmm. just yet. Um, people who have been here longer are more likely to be members of things mm -hmm. you know some of that is a function of age and stage in their lives um, and some of that is just a function of I remember when I first moved to Hartford and it takes you the first year to figure out where right. the grocery store is right. how I get to my job on time you mm -hmm. know all those different things and you start to add layers as you're in a community for a longer period of time so that that bears out in the data as well hmm. Let's talk for a little bit um, about 75 and old. You define senior as mm -hmm. 65 plus. Mm -hmm. um, did you find a huge attitude break between like the 65 to 75, 75 older? Were there shifts within the senior um, population about some of these? Yeah, there, as well? there are some differences. So we um, just based on kind of standard demographic definitions, we said anyone who's 65 plus mm -hmm. is considered a, a senior. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Closing in. <laughs> but one of the things that's interesting is people have identified, well, it, if you're thinking of seniors with a certain definition, we only define seniors by an age. Mm -hmm. We don't define them by, an, by a need, by a lifestyle, mm -hmm. by anything. So there are some people who are super active still at the age of 87. And there are some people mm -hmm. who are in need of lots more support at the age of 52. Mm -hmm. um, so there's kind of a broad definition there, but we defined it as uh, folks who were 65 plus, and then we had a subdivision, like you said, between those 75 plus and the 65 to 74 year olds. And we have that kind of all the way down mm -hmm. the age group. Um, there weren't a lot of major differences, but for example, in the, in the priorities, that I talked about, mm -hmm. there were some flips, some differences in priority where the 65 to 74 year old group was a little more focused on programming for young families than the 75 plus. Okay, that makes sense. Um, and Transportation issues maybe pop out at Exactly, plus. I think, um, you know, one of the things that we were looking for with the 75 plus group especially was are people living at home isolated mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. is there a group of people who are um, low income and in need that we're not serving. And what'd you find? We, <laughs> the data doesn't show that that is a major concern. Okay. Um, it does show that there's a group of people who are uh, middle aged, right? Kids of older adults who are concerned about the caregiving needs of their parents. Okay. Um, so that's a group that we want to talk to more, I think, and that the community probably wants to explore a little bit, um, understanding what that group might need. And with this sort of new focus on aging in place, mm -hmm. that means different things to different people. Absolutely. And it needs a lot of support, 
that um, we may or may not have as a community right it, now. It sounds like that most of the respondents preferred to receive services from a Jewish agency, should they need it. In Correct? the older groups, yes. Older 75 plus, 65 plus? Uh, 65 plus, 75 plus it was almost across the board. Wow. People wanted um, Jewish agencies to provide social services for okay. them. Um, and for the younger groups, that was, um, they were more likely to have uh, uh, less of an opinion one way or another. So that's one of the things that we're looking at a little bit deeper to understand if that's part of a, a generational difference mm -hmm. or if that's just how this data bore out. And, and interesting, what's different? You know, what's different mm -hmm. about, for example, you know, the hospital for senior care versus a acute care hospital? Right. You know, is it is it really the Jewish component? Is it that you feel closer to what they're, the environment? You know, it, it is interesting to see what people are feeling around that. Or is it a sentimentality even? Some of our Jewish agencies have been in the community for over 100 years. Right, right. And so your mother went there, your father went there, and therefore why wouldn't you, you know, for services? Right, right. exactly. You, you trust them. I think also, too, there's a sense that, um, when you're when you're aging and you're dealing with potential um i mean when you're dealing with end of life kinds mm -hmm. of questions um mm -hmm. people are m more likely to really look at you know who is going to be there to help them and how they're going to make sure that they do that in a way that they're comfortable and, and i think a number of people put active religion on the shelf for a period of time and maybe when they get older again, much like raising their children, they want to get back to it. They're feeling the need to reconnect. And so, yeah, especially end of life, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I was thinking about something as you were talking about the findings that people want to be more connected, yet it seems like so many nonprofit agencies have trouble finding volunteers, mm. fi trouble finding board members, trouble mm -hmm. finding whatever. Mm -hmm. people to help. Mm -hmm. So how do you reconcile those two points? If people want to be involved and engaged, is it a different kind of involvement that they're looking for? Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting. Those are the kinds of questions that we hope that JMAP engenders for the community at large. Okay. When you see a data point, you know, we don't know why that data point is the way it is. We do a deeper dive to understand the data a little bit better, but it's really up to us as community members as institutions to think about what that means. Mm -hmm. So when you look at those people who said they would like to be more involved, um, we looked at, uh, we asked them specifically, why aren't you involved? Okay. And so there are some things that people said, like the timing doesn't work. Okay. Um, some people said, uh, you know, some of the programs are um, not convenient, that kind of thing. But a lot of people said that they felt like they didn't have anyone to go with. Again, back to they didn't have anyone to go with. Right? So it's that, that idea of really feeling comfortable in a space. I think one of the things about, say, being on a board or being on a committee is that requires a, a real knowledge and affinity mm -hmm. for a particular organization. And you need ways to get engaged in that beforehand. Um, and you need ways to connect with people's passions. So it's hard to know um, if it's a matter of people not being able to find the, the passion or if, um, you know, being on board is a lot of work. It is indeed. And so sometimes I think people want ways to be engaged and be part of things. Um, but that question of how is a really important question that we're all sort of wondering about. Right. It sounds like to me, certainly, a few of the the rules may be moving forward are if you're going to have a big event or an event at your from your for your organization, and you have someone call as a single, you should offer them an opportunity to say, "Would you like to bring somebody?" Mm -hmm. Or yep. um, should you throw that out with the invitation? I mean, I know that gets expensive, but if you're talking about people feeling alienated. Mm -hmm. The plus one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, it exactly. sounds like people need to know they can have a friend with them. Yeah. Especially if they've never gone to your agency's event or participated. Yep, exactly. And I think, you know, that idea of we all know a connector right. in the community. Somebody who thinks about 
oh, there's this thing, I want to make sure that this person meets this person. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the more we can be connectors mm -hmm. for different people and different things, um, the better that will be for the entire community. It's almost like a buddy system could come out of this where you're saying, I, I want to go to something, but I don't have anyone to go with me. <laughs> Is there someone who can go with me who's interested? Exactly. In the same agency. Exactly. You know, so it's, uh, those are the kinds of things that we're really, that the data really starts to bubble up is these ideas about how can we engage and, and how should we respond to what we're finding from the data. Okay, so that's the next step for mm -hmm. for both of your organizations, Jewish Community Foundation and the Federation. Yep. So you're going to take the, the data points. I know you've done a lot of presentations throughout the community. And so now you're going to look at what are potential next steps for some of the outcomes. Mm -hmm. So I know one of the issues you've discovered that we all know about is transportation. Mm -hmm. It's a major issue for older people, certainly. Mm -hmm. How, do you, how are you going to go about tackling that enormous mm -hmm. community discussion? Right. So one of the things that we're doing first is this, the launch of JMAP is the beginning of what we are calling a year of understanding. Okay. So for every issue, the same kinds of questions that you've just brought up are bubbling to the surface, right? So for transportation, it's a question of, well, what is holding people back and how could we respond and what are the different things that, that we could do? Um, so you know, one thought, I know that some communities are uh, working on things like technology that connects people so that they don't necessarily need to leave their room in their assisted living facility, but they can still connect with people. Okay. Now, is that the be all end all? Probably not. Um, but that's the kind of thing that we want to start engaging in with the community to say, what are some of the ideas and what are some of the needs? Mm -hmm. So this year, we're going to be engaging with public conversations about different topics like senior transportation, like um, engaging interfaith families, things like that, and um, really look at how those things um, play out mm -hmm. in specific groups, in specific communities, what some of our expert uh, partners know mm -hmm. already about mm -hmm. these things, and how we can all learn from each other mm -hmm. um, to do better for our community. Um, so for senior transportation, for example, um, maybe in addition to thinking about how we get people where they would like to go, maybe we start to think about getting people out to where different seniors already are. Right. You know, more Going visitation. We go to them. We bring them what they want. We, you know, I know JFS, for example, has a great sort of uh, buddy system. Mm -hmm. Um, it's one of the things that I found personally. So one of the things that we did for the JMAP survey was uh, we went and engaged with people um, who wouldn't be able to take the computer-based survey on their own. And uh, so I had the opportunity to go to lots of different assisted living mm -hmm. facilities um, and had some really interesting conversations with folks who were at facilities unlike uh, Hoffman Summerwood Living, where um, they provide, Hoffman Summerwood Living provides those Jewish services. Right. Uh, some of these other assisted living facilities, um, someone maybe wanted to keep kosher but couldn't really do it or wanted to celebrate holidays and couldn't really do it. And um, so I thought a lot about how, how rewarding it was for me to go mm. to those places. And I think that that's a real opportunity as well. So, you know, it's bringing Judaism to the community, not just bringing community members into buildings mm -hmm. to experience Judaism, mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. it sounds like, is a piece of this. We're, we're almost, believe it or not, we're down to our last five minutes. So let me ask you a few last questions here. Um, was there anything specific that made Greater Hartford unique for people? Um, I think Greater Hartford's diversity for the size of the Jewish community, there's so much diversity of thought, of practice, of belief, of priority. And that's one of the things that I think makes Greater Hartford's Jewish community really exciting. Um, and it's a really a matter of learning from each other and really gathering all of this different information and perspectives. And yet we still have those commonalities like education for everyone that mm -hmm. became such a huge priority across mm -hmm. the board. 
So you've got a year of understanding, mm -hmm. and then what happens after your year of understanding? Are you mm. going to come back and educate the community <laughs> about what you've learned and understood? <laughs> well, once everybody understands everything. Exactly. Right? Um, the interesting thing is that actually JMAP is an ongoing okay. process. So we're developing a dashboard, which will be a community way of understanding our progress. And I want to be able to remind people, so go to uh, jmapct.org if mm -hmm. you want to see the full study or if you want to just pull out the senior one. Yep. And um, so the dashboard also will be available at jmapct.org. And that should be coming in the next, say, six months or so. Okay. And then it'll be about time to do a follow-up survey. So, so you'll see how kind of like a census, we want to be able to track progress mm -hmm. and changes over time. So we do a big one, which was last year, and then every couple of years we'll do a follow-up survey. I usually ask my guests tips, you know, health mm -hmm. tips. I'm going to ask you, based on what you've learned, what are your three quick tips to people in the community? It sounds like your first one is don't be afraid to ask if you could bring a friend. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think a lot of mine relate to the value of social connectivity. So one of the things about aging in place for seniors is that it allows them people independence. And that's really what a lot of people want, is that independence in their golden age um, <laughs> of life. But at the same time, sometimes that independence can also lead to isolation. Mm -hmm. And so what we've seen is don't be afraid to ask if you can bring a friend. Don't be afraid to invite a friend. Right. And Keep an eye out for those people that maybe you haven't seen in a while. Um, you know, uh, one 15-minute visit, one phone call, um, one little note to say that you're thinking of mm -hmm. someone can really make a big difference. Social connectivity is so important for seniors' health and, and aging well in the community. And it's important to remember not just to check on people when it's snowing. Yeah. I, I think we have a, a tendency to say, there's a foot of snow, don't forget to check on your neighbors. You know, well, mm -hmm. it could be 93 and they don't have air conditioning. Mm -hmm. Or you simply haven't seen them, as you said, for a few days. So don't be afraid to go knock on the door um, and just make sure everything's okay. Yeah. Um, I want to thank you for joining us tonight, Catherine. This has been great. And I, I want to thank the Jewish Community Foundation and the Greater Hartford Jewish Federation for investing the time and energy into this study to try and give us some perspective on how we could create a better future uh, for our community and for all the people who, who live and work in this community. Um, if you would like to suggest a topic for our next show, please email join the discussion at HebrewHealthcare.org or if you would like to submit questions, again, join the discussion at HebrewHealthcare.org. I encourage you please to go check out the JMAP study at jmapct.org as well as the websites for the Jewish Community Foundation and the Greater Hartford Jewish Federation, two important organizations really working together to make our communities stronger. Well, our show is over tonight again. Um, if you have topics, please email me. It has been a pleasure spending the evening with you. Uh, my name is Madeline Francesi, and I will look for you next month. Thanks a lot. <laughs>